Welcome to Box Church. We are so glad you have joined us. We want you to participate in this time gathered with your box. We want you to crank up the volume and sing with all your might. Clap, be intimate with the Lord. Be excited about praising Him. Let Him be your audience as you worship. If you wanna go off to a quiet place and lay face down before the Lord, you do that. This is a time in which we want you to encounter Jesus in a real way in the safety of real community. After the message is over, there will be some discussion questions for you to talk about. Be open and transparent during that time. You never know how your story and your struggles may help someone sitting right around you. And as you gather together in your box, know that you are joining with people in other parts of the world, worshiping in this exact same way. So what are you waiting for? Let's stand to our feet and get excited about worshiping our risen Savior.
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging Righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord. Was great. 
taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my sin has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free my god my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me those are words from an old song that we all know and cherish you know I like this newer part that's um, been added well it's not exactly new but it, it is more recent it says my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace that first line there my chains are gone I've been set free you know that takes me to scripture in the Bible you know uh, particularly to uh, Paul and Silas when they were being imprisoned you know, in Acts 16, 26, it says, Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Yes, everyone's chains came loose. They were set free. And isn't that just like how it is when we decide to follow Christ our chains are loosed we are no longer bound to this world and we have hope and a promise in knowing that one day we will be with God the Father hallelujah Lord thank you for your word in your sweet holy precious name amen Let's continue to worship. Word. 
worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Oh, you hold. 
Let me ask you, what are you thankful for right now? Are you thankful for your relationship with God? Are you thankful for your family and your friends? Are you thankful for your health, if you're blessed with that? Are you thankful for the clothes that you're wearing or the place where you live and call home? Are you thankful for the good things that you enjoy along with the thousands and thousands of other things that we take for granted every single day? Someone has correctly said, and I love this statement, what if you only got to keep tomorrow what you thanked God for today? That's a good word that needs to be written down and seen often. Do you know that we are commanded in Scripture to give thanks? Did you know that? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, notice what it says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is the will of God for every person? It is to give thanks to God in all circumstances. This is what we are commanded to do. Look at also Psalm 107, verse 1. It says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Again, we are commanded to give thanks to God. Look at Psalm 100. It says this, Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. We are commanded to give thanks back to God and enter his presence with thanksgiving on our lips. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says this, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Paul says, don't worry. Instead, pray. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Do you know why we are commanded to give thanks to God? you know why? Because you guessed it. God is attached to to thanksgiving. He's attached to thanksgiving. You know, he loves it and he blesses it when he receives it. It's that important to him. Let me show you some things as to how we know for sure that God is attached to thanksgiving. The first one is this. Thanksgiving is the sacrifice that God desires. It's the sacrifice that God most desires. Look at Psalm 50. Notice what it says, starting in verse 7. It says, O my people, listen as I speak. Here are my charges against you, O Israel. I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings that you constantly offer. But I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountain, and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine and everything in it. Do I eat the meat of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? He tells them, I'm okay with what you're offering to me. I don't really need those things. They all belong to me anyway. That's what he's saying. What I really want and what I really need is found in verse 14. Notice what it says. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God 
and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. He says to them, this is the sacrifice that I really want. I want the sacrifice of thanksgiving constantly being offered to me. And did you catch what happens when thanksgiving is the sacrifice that is given to God? It's the second way that we know that God is attached to thanksgiving. Look at verse 15 once again. Let me show you what it says. It says, Then call on me when you're in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. The second thing that we understand by giving thanks is that this is the reason. God is moved when we give thanks. He's moved by it. He says, make thanksgiving your offering. Bring that to me. Then call on me and I will rescue you. Because he is attached to it, he has no other choice but to act on your behalf when thanksgiving is given. Isn't that wonderful? Look at verse 23 of that same passage. Let me show you what it says. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. This is how important it is to God. You need to jot down in your notes, if you're taking notes, God is attached to thanksgiving and understand that he loves receiving thanks because he does. And listen, he is motivated to act when it is given. It is that important to him. Okay, but not only do we know that God is attached to thanksgiving because he is moved by it when it is given. Listen, we also know the third thing, and that is this. He is grieved and angered when he doesn't receive it. Did you know that? What happened when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert before they reached the promised land? What was going on with them? Well, you know that they were complaining against God. They were complaining against Moses. They were complaining against Aaron. They were demanding different food. They were demanding to go back to slavery in Egypt. And what did it do? It kindled God's wrath against them. Psalm 106 captures it like this. They grumbled in their tents. It's another way of saying that they refused to thank the Lord. Think about your own children for one second. You know, you do for them as a parent, and you do for them, and you give to them, and what little thing do you want in return? All you want them to say is, thank you. And when you don't get it, what do you demand from them? And what are you offended by when they don't respond in the right way? Let me tell you something. God feels the same way about our thanksgiving. Listen to Romans chapter 1. Notice what it says. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. All right, look at verse 21. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him what? Thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God is like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. God's judgment came upon them at that time. And listen, 
it's coming upon the generation in our time because they wouldn't worship him as creator or even give him thanks and neither do we. You know, God equates thanksgiving as worship and he grieves when he doesn't get it. Remember in the New Testament, when Jesus healed the 10 lepers, remember that story? How many came back to say, thank you? Only one. And you know who notices? Jesus. Jesus notices that only one comes back. Look at Luke 17. Here's what it says. Jesus asked, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Jesus asks three rapid questions. Each one, I believe, expressing the hurt that was in his heart. Didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this one man who's not even from the house of Israel? Why does Luke tell this story? Was it to demonstrate the miraculous healing power of Jesus? Uh, that, it, that it was done without physical touch and only by his spoken word? Was that the, the point of this? Uh, perhaps. Was it given to show just how far down Jesus will go to save the very least person on the planet? That's how these people would have viewed a Samaritan. Is that the point? Well, well, probably. But do you know why I think that this story is mentioned? I believe it is to show just how much Jesus cares about returning thanks to him and how it affects him when he doesn't receive it. Let me tell you one last reason how we know that God has attached himself to thanksgiving. He demands it, yes. He is moved by it into action, yes. He's grieved when he doesn't receive it, yes. And here's the fourth thing. He receives glory when we give him thanks. We just saw that with the leper returning to give glory back to God. Well, I want to point you to another scripture that explains this really well, giving glory to God. Notice what Paul tells the Corinthian believers in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We know that God, who raised the Lord Jesus, will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. Notice what he says in verse 15. All of this is for your benefit. As God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. Did you catch that? As more and more people come to Christ and receive the grace of the Lord, there will be great thanksgiving. And what happens when thanksgiving is given to God? God receives more and more glory. This means that every person who comes to Christ is converted from being a worshiper of this world to a worshiper of God. And when people don't come to Christ, and when God's people don't help the people of this world find Jesus, do you know what happens? We rob God of the great glory that is due his name. Imagine with me for one second, Jesus making an appearance on this earth. It's in a 100,000 seat stadium and you're so excited. And yet when you get there, you notice that there's only 1,500 people who have come to see Jesus. And you think, this is not right. He deserves the worship of the entire world. Isn't that right? And he does. You would think, why aren't more people here? The reason why we tell people the good news about Christ is so that we can gather an army of people to stop worshiping themselves and the things of this world 
so that they can erupt in a magnanimous chorus of praise and thanksgiving to God for all eternity, who is worthy of everything we give him. That's right. And when we don't do this, we rob God of receiving glory, just like the other nine that did not return. Do you know this is exactly what evangelism is? Turning people from worshiping themselves to worshiping God. And that's what every person is designed for, to worship the Lord with everything that we are and to give Him thanks. This is why the Apostle Paul says in the very next verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, that is why we never give up. The ultimate reason to never give up is so that people from every tribe, language, people, and nation can come under the authoritative rule and reign of Christ and His kingdom and give Him thanks so that He can receive more and more glory. Folks, look up here. This is what God wants. And this is what God commands. And this is what He loves to receive. And this is what moves Him to action. And this is what grieves Him when He doesn't receive it. And this is what gives Him glory. This is what He is attached to. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let me just say this. May it always be on our lips. And may it be our goal to have it on the lips of everyone that we come in contact with. Amen. He is worthy. He is worthy. Let's give him thanksgiving and praise. Lord, I thank you for this moment. God, I do thank you and I praise you. God, I give you glory by worshiping you and giving you praise and giving you thanksgiving. God, may thanksgiving constantly be on my mouth. May your goodness and thankfulness to you, O oh God, be my every heartbeat. And God, may I be committed to turning people from worshiping the things of this world to worshiping you, the true and living God. God, we are most satisfied, I believe, when we are giving you thanks. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to do that. So God, during this time of discussion with one another, man, may it motivate us to action. May we just write down somewhere on a piece of paper, stick it on our mirror when we're brushing our teeth. Hey, put it in our car. Give thanks to God. He's attached to thanksgiving. Give thanksgiving to the Lord as much as possible. So God, turn us into this, Lord. We praise you and we thank you that you're going to do this. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad that you worship Jesus with Box Church. Know that this is just the beginning point for your box for the rest of the week. Again, this is about living in community with one another. So eat together, take the Lord's Supper together, pray together, get to know one another, and enjoy the company of those in your box, and spend time thinking about how you can financially bless the community, the nation, and the world. And when you gather together again, do so in the company of new people that you have brought to the Lord. Continue to be the church and continue to bless the community right where you are.